Well, I want to start by talking with you both about non-attendance. It is um, one of the, I suppose, the biggest challenges in our education system is getting kids into school so that they can learn. Jan, you've thrown 160 million at this problem in the past 12 months, and credit where it is due, we have seen um, an uplift of around 10% in that regular attendance, but it's only to 59.5% of kids, and that is attending over that 90%. It's not good enough, is it? No, but there is good news, is that it is turning around, and we do know that the, the drivers that are behind non-attendance are complex and varied and we have put in a very evidence-based strategic plan that uh, has been really well received by the sector as well and we're making certain that we're funding those attendance offers, putting the funding into the attendance service, bringing that attendance service closer to schools and making certain that schools have the resourcing that they need. Now it is going to be a big turnaround but it is turning around. Is it good news Erica? Well, when I look back at when we left office, there were about 6,700 kids who were chronically truant for two terms or more. By 2019, that number was 40,000. Now, why did that not then light a fire under Chris Hipkins in terms of attendance? It's only been in the last very short while where the government have actually tried to do anything. And I'll put it to you that they put $50 million in during COVID for an attendance strategy. And the ministry's own advice said that that didn't actually make any difference. They can't find any evidence to see it made any difference. The other thing that I would say is that, you know, term one dirt data looks like it's turned around a bit. I really hope that it has, but you have to remember, mm. that was when we had the floods, the teacher strikes, uh, we had kids, remember, I mean, my daughter, I remember, was didn't have a full week at school. So mm. those kids were all marked as being present even though they weren't at school. So normally they would have been uh, not attending. So th That's the point is, hang on a minute, no, I'm talking. True. The That's second se term two data, which we don't have yet and we won't have till after the election, by the way, should mm. be out by now. Mm. There's no reason for it not to be out. The word on the street is that term two data is less than 50% again. Jan now the question to Jan is, have you seen that data and what does it say for term two? I absolutely have not seen that data uh, because, and you've been told this a number of times, so I'll let me explain it to you again. Term two is our biggest data pool that we collect in education. It is the only data pool that has the longitudinal, uh, shows the longitudinal changes in, in uh, attendance, but it's also where we get our roll numbers from. That's why it takes so Except long for that data rubbish, to come in. Because I've been talking but to people at the ministry who say when they look at Term 2 data, and now, with all the other terms, they look at them exactly the same. There is no more work required. The fact is that data should be out. But look, let's that's look at the, not, let's look at the, the wider true. point in all of this is that, that they is took not too true. long. But let's just take a look at the, if we want to take a social investment approach to make sure that these kids are not becoming disengaged. I do, I do want to talk to you about that because this was sort of a, a, an area that I wanted to delve into, uh, into with you both. Um, there, there is a hardcore group of kids out there, around 8% or 60 62,000, which is enough kids to fill Eden Park and some, um, that are chronically absent. They are there less than 70% of the time at school. So how do you get to them? I'll start with you, Erica, and I'll come to you, Jan. Look, there's two parts to this, right? There's, uh, if you like, the metaphor of the, the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff and the, and, the, the, and the gate at the top of the cliff. We have to use a social investment approach in terms of making sure that our kids are on track with their learning. The what does reason, that mean? Well, I'll tell you. That, that's just a slogan. What well, does that let mean? Let me explain, Jan, because you, you might learn something. What we I need to do it. is make... Well, let's, we need to make sure that our kids are on track with their learning because the reason that they become disengaged, and this is the one thing we never talk about, we talk about all of these other things, we never make the link between achievement and attendance. If half of our kids are not at curriculum, which yes. they're not, by by the end of year eight for anything, what is the chance they're going to continue to turn up at high school every day when 41% are at curriculum for mathematics, 20% for science? So that's the first thing. That's actually, we need to Eric, make sure they're engaged. There because that's actually the point that I'm making is that you, if these kids aren't at school, then they, you, you can't engage but, them. It doesn't matter yeah, what my, you do. My so point how is are you, they're falling out. How are you going to get them there? My point is that they're falling out because they're not engaged with their learning. They're not feeling confident in their abilities. That's but the top of the class. Like, hang simplistic. on, that's the top of the class. Too simplistic. But I want... I want Jen, go ahead. That is far too simplistic. As I've said, the drivers behind non-attendance are complex and varied. We have poverty that leads into that, and that's why we've got to have a wraparound to make certain that all of those factors that are keeping those kids away from the school are being addressed. That's why we've got those attendance officers working through that data, but making certain they're working with those young people and their whānau to determine what those issues are. And don't you talk to me about the backroom, because if you get rid of those people in the back, 
tech room. What does that mean? Who are going to do those jobs? Those are the people, those are the engine room that keeps this country going room. in this country. A hundred and seventy thousand dollar communication uh, analyst that I saw advertised on, on the ministry's website recently. That's the people I'm talking about. But look, two points. One, we never talk about the link between achievement and attendance. We've got to make sure our kids are on track with learning. The second thing is that, yes, we have currently a group of hardcore kids that are chronically truant, and we have to be backing people like Blue Light, who take our uh, chronically truant and our, our dis un un unenrolled kids, which, by the way, are at an all-time high mm. again, mm. and f back them. Now, these guys do And an that's why we've got extra money into oh, it. Thank you know you, what? They you had to go on the news to get that, Thank Jan. you, you know for what? agreeing with us, because that's Hipkins. exactly what we Chris got Hipkins, in the budget. Chris Hipkins went money. to Blue Thank Light you. and said to them, how much money do you need to actually do a good job? And they said, this much. And he went, OK, and then guess what? He gave them nothing. They went on the news. I think it was even TV3 or maybe TV... I forget which, which channel. Funny they had to go on the news. They had to go on the news to get that. When? Now, six, it was you a had budget six announcement. years, Jan. It was six a years. Announcement. You're getting very impassioned, six and I want to get years. to another important area, which is outcomes. I know uh, that is a favourite of the National Party, Erica. Of the 64,000 students who left school last year, only half had NCEA Level 3 or above. A quarter left without NCEA Level 2. And and um, that is considered the minimum level to do further study. 15% didn't reach NCEA Level 1 at all. And it strikes me that these are the kids who have been through their schooling actually under both of your governments. If you look at They've Māori, been failed, haven't if they? At, if you look at Māori, it's 30% leaving with no qualification. But, so, But the point here is that national standards hasn't worked for those kids and neither has the last six years of this government. So we know that outcomes for all learners are not equal and we know that some has been very, very challenging for them and actually simply, I'm going to put it there, that that is not good enough. And that is why we need to bring an evidence-based approach to the work that we're doing and make certain that we're listening to the experts. Why I've brought together that expert group to develop that core teaching requirement work, which is incredible incredibly important. That will change this around, but we also need to make certain that the it's curriculum, for those the curriculum, kids. the work that we're doing at the moment around making certain that we're refreshing that curriculum has those kids at the centre. Not a one-size-fits-all, which we know that the other side, National, are wow. very looking to six bring in. Six years and we're not still talking about evidence. a curriculum. Still not talking about it. Not We've listening to the years evidence. of these kids who have been absolutely massively failed, right? Actually, it's longer I'm than that, Erica, to be fair. It's way longer than that. But all let's of talk those about the solution. Yeah, national let's talk about standards. the solutions. All right. of those kids went no, what through I'm national standards. Six years, and what have they done? They got rid of national standards, and what have they done in six years? What have well, they done? Absolutely nothing. Jan is still talking about a curriculum refresh. She's still talking about a common practice model. Let me tell you about the common practice model, because if you think that by voting for Jan... I don't and think you should, should I, because I'm it's talking. actually our the common, common, common practice model, the common not practice your model. model. What I no, want to know, talk about it what I want to know a, is actually how will you drive better yeah. outcomes, Erica? Well, what I won't be doing is having a common practice model that talks about mathematics in but terms of social justice and critical theory. You won't be talking theory. about for mathematics? Goodness you won't sake. be talking about mathematics? Mathematics. You are talking, talking about, about maths the young in terms person of at the how, how, you how are kids not talk able about to... the young person at the centre. That's oh what my you won't God, be talking Jan, it's about. Word salad. What are you even no, talking about? No, that's what you're talking about. Common is practice word model salad. based on social justice and critical theory rather than times tables. For God's sake, if you want a, if you want that in your life, then vote for Jan. It is a nightmare. <laughs> It is based we on evidence. Been talking. So the what evidence and the evidence critical don't theory? count. Good the Lord. experts Which and the evidence, evidence don't Which count. Which experts? Right. This is we exactly don't okay. no evidence. Okay. So we've got a common practice on. model. Evidence. No, we've got a common practice model that's about to be compulsory. <laughs> she said it's going to be compulsory. <laughs> We're about to go to the election. Does anyone know what that actually what, what it is? No, but no, it's not even been released yet. I'm, We've seen the pre-document and it is a nightmare. Okay, it is absolutely Jan, not ideology. Jan, just shows, right reply. just shows a lack of understanding and the fact that we will not that we have a national party that will not listen to the evidence, will not listen to the experts. Hang on, oh, has I experts in structured literacy. Has I have been talking to oh, all over New Zealand talk and about all around the world. Let's talk shall about structured we? literacy. We I, do I, get happily, I will happily talk about structured literacy. Structured literacy is a trademark term. And I on, feel will... that it's been conflated with the science of reading. I have had parents of neurodiverse kids that have contacted me in the last couple of weeks saying, National want our kids to fail because structured literacy has failed our kids because they're talking about a one-size-fits-all. They are not following the science what of reading. The... the science of reading includes structured literacy, but it also can includes other approaches as well. I'm so, really oh, concerned wow. so that we it, have a word salad go. going on here. Here we go with the and-and approach. Erica. And this is what all the experts are worried about. We're going to oh, take... No, like, no, no, no. 
that is wrong, and I'm going to correct that right now. You're saying all the experts. The experts that we have that are academics and from the sector are very, very concerned about this announcement. They are very concerned that there is this one Hang size on. fits Hang all. On. Now, don't get me wrong, Rebecca. Yes. I do you like really it. like structured literacy. Yeah, but it, is but it doesn't one, sound like it. It is one approach that sits within the science of reading. Okay. It's a bit like, can I give an analogy? It's um, a if it's a like quick one. A quick one. If we had cancer treatment, treatments. You and I had the same cancer, but we've got different comorbidities. We will have different treatments. Okay. It is the same here. We do not have a one-size-fits-all, but yes, the science of reading is, is important. The problem. This is the problem that National have, is that they are, not following the, they are so not following the Eric, science look. of reading. We, we are following the science of reading. No, We've looked not. at all of the inter I, I've not. let you talk, Hang on. Jan, and I haven't interrupted Erica, you, so how about you not. just let me have a go? Erica, go. Right. We have looked at all of the international evidence around the science of reading and we know that a structured literacy approach, which is explicit teaching in a systematic way with a scope and sequence, is the way that 95% of our kids will learn to read. I have been in so many schools, Kaiapoi North, Tauranga Intermediate, uh, Tauranga Primary School, uh, and let me tell you about um, Central Normal School, where mm -hmm. they've done structured literacy for two years and their Māori kids are now reading at the same level as every other kid. The results are incredible. Every single school you go into say, we will never go back. Jan wants you to think that we can keep doing the three-queuing approach, looking at the picture, no, 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 guessing the word, I don't. having a think about the context. Out there. I don't believe in that at all. So why I'm would wanting you say a science of reading approach. What Erica is talking about, as I said, structured literacy is so, a trademark. Hang on, hang it's on. Really I need to get I need to move us. On, like, I want to stay on this topic, but I want to move on a little bit, which is that uh, structured literacy is in international and it is uh, in as an option no, under there Labour. Are, there are, we don't know. There are, okay. Yes, it is, but there okay. are elements good, of good. structured Great. literacy at the moment, Rebecca. That are called people are calling structured literacy, which aren't. If it okay. is mandated like this, they will not be able to use those elements within their classroom. Okay. That is um, what is concerning, and we will have kids failing. I National wanna, want. So what is common practice model? When I is it going to be? Out before the election, maybe if we're lucky. I'm very much hoping that it will be, Erica. You will have to okay. wait and find out. We have to I wait mean, and see. We have to wait and see. It to doesn't see what fill me with confidence. Is. No, it doesn't. Does um, it? Okay, I want to move on to because this is another hot button issue, um, which is performance pay for teachers. I read something interesting uh, actually from James Bentley, principal of St Peter's College, who says it's a sad fact that in many schools the first 15 coach has more accountability for results than the maths or English department. So why not incentivise the great no, teaching? No, because under it. Under under, completely undermines the whole of the profession. We need to support our profession. We need them all to be great. That, is, that has been shown elsewhere in the world to not make a difference. In fact, it has a negative impact on our teaching profession. We don't want to marginalise them. It is something that I'm absolutely against. You're against it. Yeah. Erica? It's not in our plan. It's not something I've been looking at. I'm not interested in it. I'm looking at, I'm interested in attendance and achievement and making sure we're equipping every single one of our teachers with the resources of professional development and the tools that they need to be able to teach structured literacy and a maths mastery approach. Jan, we're just about out of time. I'm going to let you sum up as well. Look, I know that uh, we've got challenges within the education system, but we took over a system that was in dire straits. We are rebuilding it. We are seeing equity that is coming back into the system, really starting to see that achievement turn around, particularly with our what younger children. Turn around? Particularly with what our younger children. What data can you point to to show that anything better? Better start, better. Erica, you should have oh, a look at Oh, the structured literacy stone. approach. That's what's Actually, doing... Actually, <laughs> guess what? No, it's not. Thank you very That's much, That's the Jan. problem. It's not structured <laughs> literacy. Okay. <laughs> OK, I mean, this has been impassioned. I um, thank you both and I wish you both the best of luck. Whoever ends up with education, <laughs> it is important for our kids and for the future of our country. Thanks thank so you. much, Thanks, Stanford Rebecca. and Jan Thank you. Oh, that was a lot.